The realities of off-grid living are often not as glamorous as we make them out to be on video. So today, we're going to dig a little deeper into those realities. The challenges, the rewards, and the daily maintenance. So join me while I meet Scott and Sharon, and we learn a little more about the nitty gritty of off-grid living. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Craig. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good. Nice view. It's a great view. Would you like to come and have a look around? I'd love it. Hi, I'm Scott. We live in Mangatoroto. I'm Sharon. Welcome to our um, off-grid paradise. Here we are. The mountain over there, it goes right across to the Brindouins in the background. Yeah. So that's north facing. We were really fortunate when we bought this property. Yeah. That we got the north facing um, aspect, which makes it perfect for solar. Yeah, good for solar. <laughs> so how far does it go this way? It just goes to that ridge line there, doesn't it? Just over the back of this ridge line with the, with the pine trees on it, you can see up the side here, the fence line, and up the other side, you can just see it behind the trees over there. I notice it's a uh, old piece of forestry block. Oh yeah, lots of work. The place has been quite damaged in the past, so yeah. it's getting that regenerating back again is going to be a bit of a job. I've seen places that have just had all the pine trees felled and they're just a mess. They like are. It, you normally can't walk in it. No. no. Well, this had been a couple of years, so um, the grass and the rubble and the trees had just been left there. It was all about a metre high. Yeah. So we put some cows in there and portable electric fences so that we could break it in a little bit at a time so that we could actually get around place. It was actually quite dangerous for us to try and we couldn't we couldn't walk through a paddock. It was slash a track and put an electric fence through and then put the animals in there. It was really daunting and it was quite disheartening at times when you sort of felt like you were taking three steps forward and ten back. And so why Kuiper? Two reasons. It's affordable at the time, yeah. uh, beautiful, and also Scott has family roots here, so it was oh. quite a nice way for him to reconnect. So that was the main draw as well. And, and why this piece of land here? Uh, we could afford it, yeah. <laughs> and it's also, it's quite close to his marae, which is about 10, 15 minutes down the road. So at some stage, he'll be able to get really connected with what's going on with this community. Ah, oh, awesome. I like the fact too that it's on a slope like that because gravity works well for you when you're <laughs> off-grid, eh? It's good sure for does. water and everything, eh? Yeah, sure yeah. does. A lot of our water is gravity fed out of what we capture off the roof. Um, we've used old 44 gallon drums, which we've cut in half and put bullcocks in for troughs. Yeah, it works well, eh? <laughs> it did work well and cost nothing apart from the bullcocks. <laughs> we've got IPC tanks around the place that we pump water to. We just bought a little pump, pretty cheap, and we just hook that up when we get a lot of rain. One of our most exciting moments was having boundaries for our property, as when we bought it, there was no boundary fences because it's a forestry cutover block and they destroyed the fences when they were harvesting. And having power once we had our solar installed because we were living off a generator basically and the silence of solar, unbelievable. It was a really big moment that first night when we flicked the switch and the lights popped on and we went, oh look at that. <laughs> yeah, it was actually. Uh, it was a really big deal. Yeah. It was just like, oh I could turn the lights on. <laughs> so when we first came here, um, it was just the skyline and over time we've sort of evolved. We've built the studio recently. As you can see over here, the skyline's having a few modifications. <laughs> um, we're putting a veranda around the outside, which will give us a bit more living space in the summer as well. Yeah, and you've got the solar in the cabinet there on the outside? Yes, we do. So we bought this batch kit and the um, hybrid inverter um, a few years ago now, so um, it's probably got a more updated version now than what when we bought this. This has been perfect. It's been really easy to use and to see what's going on with our electricity. It's able to be connected to our generator to top it up if there's low Sundays, and it runs what we need it to run, which is the most important thing. So what's life like? living off-grid here with this batch kit as opposed to when you had power in a suburban house? Oh, you've got to be so much more mindful of what you do mm. and what you use. I, I find that when we were on the grid in the suburban house, um, we took a lot for granted. Um, now it's the batch kit is perfect for what we need at this time. 
we've had to be really aware of how we use electricity like we can't leave the TV running all night. Um, <laughs> I don't iron, which I used to. <laughs> it's a more of a mindset and just changing the way you think about how you live. And rather than just going, oh yeah, I'll just flick a switch, you have to think about what the batteries are doing today, yeah. what the day is like outside, yeah. and do I need to use that or can I use something else? We do a lot of battery charging for our, our electric fences, which is great. They usually recharge off their own little solar panels, but we can recharge the batteries through this yeah. setup, which is great. That's the interesting thing with solar is you've got more power than you can use in summer, mm -hmm. and then in winter you've got to think about all the power you use and yeah. use sparingly. Yeah. Absolutely, and, and it's just being mindful about things. You know, mm. do you really need to have the TV going all day? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not a bad thing to turn the TV on. <laughs> That's right. It's also not a bad thing to not have to do ironing, I guess, as well. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the big challenges that we faced when we first came here were, OK, now we've got to get our solar installed. So finding an electrician that was willing to do that and sign it off so that it was compliant with um, the, the local authorities, that, that was a big deal. And also for our insurance policy, we needed something that was um, up to standard. And so finding a really decent electrician, we were really lucky. Yeah. We, we found Ashton and the guys at Aztec, they just came and did a stellar job. They told us what we needed to do and they just installed it for us and, and it's compliant and the gear itself is fantastic. In here, it's pretty basic. It will be changing as we can afford to and as we um, have time. Fireplace is brilliant in the winter time. It just takes that dampness out and it, you know, always makes you feel good. Yeah, yeah, the cotton romantic, eh? <laughs> yeah, I'm the same. Yeah. Wood fire is yeah. great. Eventually what we'll do is we'll put a hot water cupboard in and we'll have a wet bag. Yes. So we can heat the water in the summer from the solar and turn it off at night and then have that working in the winter time when there's less sunlight. LED lights, because they use less power. And you're cooking on the barbecue right We now. are cooking on a barbecue. I noticed no insulation in here. That's going to be part of the work in progress. So yeah. as you can see, what we bought when we bought this place, it was just like this. Yeah. There was no fireplace in here. It was basically a sink with one cold tap. It was quite daunting when you come from town and you've got all the hot water and, and everything and you've got one tap. Yeah. And I noticed these fridges look quite big, tall fridges, eh? Yep, Scott. He put them on a timer so that we don't open the fridge door or the freezer door unnecessarily, so it keeps it cold. And the timer means that it runs in the hours that we have the most power available. <laughs> yeah. Well, when it came to choosing a solar system, we spoke to a lot of suppliers. And mm. to be honest, a lot of them are daylight robbers, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. And um, I stumbled on grid free and I still don't know how, <laughs> but it was affordable and it's, it's proving itself with us. Um, it's providing everything we need um, and we didn't have to pay an arm and a leg to pay for it. Looking at what was available, which was really difficult, especially for us because we knew diddly squat about how solar works or anything like that. We wanted something that was user friendly, easy to understand and people that would give us confidence in, in what was happening and what the product was and how we could understand it in layman's terms rather than technicalities because we don't get that. It's not the way we run. Um, and having found Grid Free and then talking with Ethan and finding out what would suit our lifestyle best and for our needs at the time, that was yeah, really, really yeah, lucky. And yeah. I think that we struck gold the day that Scott found their website. That was just brilliant. So this is our bedroom. It's pretty basic. It looks like a hoarder's paradise at the moment, but it's coming from a bigger home and trying to find storage for what we've got in a much smaller place. Part of the reason why we're doing the extension in the brand is outside, but it's also giving us a reason to think about where we're going to put storage in here and what we're going to need and what we can use and what we can keep and other things that we can get rid of. So it does make you think about all aspects of your life, yeah. uh, being off grid and downsizing so dramatically. Were you surprised at how much stuff you had in your, oh, in your three bedroom home? 
Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I notice this room's insulated. Yep, so this one's insulated and lined. You can really see the benefits. Okay, brilliant. If I were to give advice to anybody starting out, it's believe in yourself and do your homework. And be prepared for a little bit of hard work, but it pays off in the end. Yeah, and I think you need to work local and get people that are reputable that you feel comfortable with and back yourself. So in here, we're going to be enclosing this underneath the new veranda um, as our bathroom. At present, our um, bathroom is pretty basic. A camping shower that blows out when the <laughs> wind blows the wrong way. And it's not much fun sort of like having to dash down a slippery slope into the toilet in the middle of the night. <laughs> uh -huh. So this will be luxury. This, this will, be will be brand new luxury. <laughs> we'll be happy with this. So yep, new shower, toilet, wash house sort of area here. Here's our water pump which we use to pump all of our water around and filters. Really important to have filters and um, to treat the water in your water tanks especially in the summertime. Get yeah. lots of greebies coming off the roof. So you've got your own power, you've got your own water, you've got your own stock, you'd have your own veggies. Mm -hmm. You just about don't need anything else. Just about and we can be happy. <laughs> Keep it simple. We had the land blessed from a local Kaumatua because of the damage that's been done from the forestry. I love nature and it's good to be back here mm. with, with nature. So that's why a lot of the reason of this lifestyle beats living in the city <laughs> and putting up with people and traffic. And I think what's important to us is our home and having a good quality of life. Yeah and being able to be around the things like, we love our dogs, we love our cows, we want to do our gardens, we want to plant trees. We might be born again hippies in our old age, but I don't care, I mean, this is what's important to us and, yeah. it, and it makes us feel good. And it, and it's, it it's actually foot, it beneficial. It leaves a small footprint that we leave behind. Mm. We try to do as much recycling as we possibly can, but then again, it's also, we don't need as much as we used to, which is kind of interesting. Finding out about needs and wants is, is making that differentiation with things. It's been really intriguing and quite awesome to explore that further. Well, living off grids changed my life and Sharon's life, as in we spend a lot more time outside. Um, yeah, it's challenging, but yeah, I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Many a job here has been um, accomplished with a bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> 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 what I love most about this lifestyle is that it enables me to live a life in a way that I think is more about being a protector of the land and valuing what we have, making it the best land that it can be because as you've seen it's been pretty brutalised over the years with the forestry and, and the way that it's been left. So this gives us an, an opportunity to bring this land back to being fruitful, at, um, to be treated in a manner that's a bit more respectful than what has been in the past. And that makes us feel a lot better about ourselves as well as giving us a much healthier, more enriching lifestyle. For us, we feel like we've, we've won the lottery. You know, it's, it's had a, a, a few, quite a few tears, um, a few tantrums. Um, I've thrown my toys more than once and um, I wouldn't want it to be any other way, honestly. This is just the best, being here and doing this. And, you know, we might not have um, a mansion, but I don't want to do all that housework all the time. And I'd rather actually be living a lifestyle that's meaningful and that I can say, yeah, we did this ourselves.